did you know that there are two types of people in the world? Those that when you say servo, think one of these. And those that when you say servo, picture one of these guys. This is a servo motor. And the way that it works is that there are a bunch of gears in here. There is a regular, plain old DC motor on the inside. So a regular motor. And there is also a, a potentiometer, which is a device that can detect the position of the motor. So in that way, you can exactly position this arm. You can say, go to 32 degrees, and whoop, it will go there. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect them. You will need your micro bit and a servo motor. I am doing it with um, the board here, um, the edge board, the motor driver board, but you don't actually need that for a servo motor. The important things are how we plug it in. For convenience, you will note that there are different wire colors here, uh, brown, red, and yellow. Come on, focus. No, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my computer. I thought everyone does that. Oh, well, maybe I'll move a little bit further back. There we go. Okay, so brown is this one here. For convenience, I've connected that one to a brown wire, and I've connected the red one to a red, you know, male, male breadboard wire, and the yellow one to a male, male breadboard wire. But the colors of these wires on the left don't matter. What is important is the color of these ones. So if you can't find a brown, red, and yellow, which is likely, just use something else. Just be consistent. So brown is going to go to ground. That's for power. And red uh, is our positive power supply. So that's going to go to 5 volts. And yellow is our signal where we give it data and tell it what position to go to. So we've got brown is ground, red is 5 volts, and yellow is our signal. So first, let's start with brown. Brown goes to ground. There are a few places where you can get ground. There's ground up here on the top. There is also ground uh, here. You can see it says ground, so you can plug it into there. Ground there as well. Um, and there's ground here. That negative is actually ground. Hmm. You could plug it into any of these. I'm going to choose to do something maybe a little bit silly and plug it into here with the other one. That seems a little bit silly now, but hopefully that decision will make sense in a minute. I'm going to put two of these things in the same screw terminal. So this one here goes in there. Beautiful. All right, now I can tighten this down. It's a little bit fiddly to do it with two, but you can tighten it down so you've got two in there and it's a solid connection. If this was a more permanent thing, then uh, there are many ways you could do this. One of them is you could cut this and strip it. Cut this, strip it. Uh, twist these two ends together and solder it, and then put that inside there. Um, you don't even have to solder it, but you could twist these together. So if you did want to make that more permanent connection, uh, that's called a pigtail connection. Mm. None of these diagrams really do it justice. Uh, but, yeah, you would cut here, cut here, strip a little bit off, and then just twist the copper together, and then put it in there. Um, as it stands, this maybe is a little bit delicate. Anyway, I have my brown for my servo motor is connected to ground, so we can start to power this thing. For power, you need to connect the ground, but also this plus 5 volts, this red wire. This red wire needs to go into 5 volts. What you must not do is connect the red wire to anything on the micro bit. So don't connect it to any of these pins. Um, definitely don't connect it to 3 volts. Do not power it with the 3 volts of the micro bit. The micro bit cannot power a servo motor. Not very well. Um, and it could damage the micro bit. So instead, we're going to need a 12, sorry, a 5 volt voltage source. What's that over there? It's USB. USB is 5 volts. And the USB, the 5 volts, is this red wire. The plus 
is that um, red wire, and that is five volts. So if I get my screwdriver, oh, that was a wibbly wobbly, and unscrew this one a little bit, I can do the same thing. There you go, undo that. The red wire now, come on, come on red wire, can go in here. Cool, don't ha tighten it too hard. You only need enough so it makes a connection on both of them. Um, just tighten until you feel resistance and then stop. So hopefully this thing has power. Hmm, hard to tell. If you're going to spin this, I know it's really fun to spin it, but don't go absolutely crazy and spin it really fast because the gears will break um, or the motor might burn out. All right, the last thing that we need to connect is the yellow wire, the last one. And this one is the data for the servo motor. This is how we tell the servo motor what angle to go to. Now to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna do a little bit of the Google and look for servo micro bit um, in micro Python. Now look, there are lots of pictures here that say to connect it to pin zero. Um, uh, oh, micro Python. There you go, there's some code here that might help us. Good, some wiring that might help us, but I've just shown you the wiring. Oh, look at this. Apparently 100 is all one millisecond pulse. 200 is two milliseconds. Hmm. Well, let us try this code. I will put a link to this code in the description. Device disconnected, that's okay, let's connect again and paste that in here and see if this works. Let's flash it. It's awfully quiet. It doesn't sound like much is happening, does it? You know why? I forgot to attach this guy. We can attach this, the default is pin zero. I'm going to attach it. Look at all these options. I'm gonna attach it in pin zero. See if that works. Well, that's pin, that's pin 8. There you go, pin 0. Hmm, the servo motor seems very, very quiet. Let's just plug this back in. Yes, it appears to be connected. Hmm, maybe let's try plugging it into pin one. We'll see if that gives us any luck. There we go. That does mean that I'll need to change my code, not that one, this one, so that it, everything is now using pin one in all the places that I see pin zero. Make sure when you're changing a variable that you check everywhere that it could possibly appear. Flashing, flashed. Oh, that did it! Do you know what I think? I think the reason that it didn't work for pin zero for me, well, actually I don't think I even tried pin zero. Um, I don't know, but it appears to be working with pin one. Let's have a look. Cool. So what is this doing? Our code says, let's close here. It says go to 150 and then 100 and then 200 and spend one second on each of them. 